Fletcher was founded in 2002, a joint effort that united the Claremont Graduate University School of Religion with the Immaculate Heart Community, its college center, and its alumni association. Our partnership has thrived in the intervening years and is a source of great pride to the Department of Religion, the School of Arts and Humanities, and the university. It's good to be here. The goal of this collaboration was to establish an annual event honoring the life, and I'm quoting now from the original documents, great contributions of Dr. Patricia A. Reef of the Immaculate Heart Community. We will hear much more about her in a minute. But at this point, I would like to recognize the members of the lecture committee. You don't have to stand up if you just wave at us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Don't be humble. was, among many remarkable and indefatigable things, the founder, in 1984, of the master's program in feminist spirituality at, the Mar at Immaculate Heart College. So this is actually a great lead-in for my next introduction, because I would like to introduce to you my colleague Nicola Densi lewis Associate Professor of Religion and the Margot L. Goldsmith Chair in Women's Studies and Religion. And she is the introducer that I am introducing. Please <laughs> Professor Denzi Lewis. Of any of that stuff. 
her early understanding of the importance of religion as part of feminist studies, in, uh, of, of religion as part of feminist studies in general, uh, what's now sometimes called gender studies. But she really understood that religion couldn't be left out of that, and that to leave it out was to leave out a real factor, kind of an engine, if you will, for discrimination and for oppression that could, in fact, be turned around, as the great theologian Dan McGuire says, with its renewable moral energy. In 1975, Anne McGrew Bennett was giving a talk at Claremont. And I think it was like, it, to put it in one word, and shine a light on the meaning of patriarchy. That had not been really that conversant with it. And all of a sudden, she saw how the patriarchal structures that exist in every country and in the world had been responsible for poverty, you know, for people's disempowerment, for the, you know, degrading of the environment. And it's like that, it just clicked. It's like, before that, she could see all these things, but didn't get what was responsible for them. And so she talks and she says, I was born again at that moment. So the way for us to do that 
again, is to think hard on what was important to her, to bring forward issues in social activism, social justice, uh, to think about issues uh, around women's spirituality, about um, sometimes resistance to women's movements, um, women's activism, women's spirituality even, uh, and to see how these issues are still active in life right now in the world. So this is very much what we try to do in WSR as a program, and the lecture itself is a, is a way to kind of to, to bring that moment into focus for an audience that's free, it's open to the public, bring everybody in from all kinds of places to listen to a speaker who honors this legacy of that brief. Worship. 
So we are thrilled to host her here at CGU as our annual Pat Reed speaker with her lecture, Liturgical Justice Through Sacred Song. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Kim Harris.
Somebody say amen. amen. And in 1851 in Akron, Ohio, at a women's rights convention. Later that year, for the celebration of Black Catholic History Month. Did you know this is a Black Catholic History yeah. Month? It is November. Coming right up. For the celebration of Black Catholic History Month, it was sung and prayed at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. Welcome Table. It's an original liturgical composition and it's based on the melodies and meanings of African American spirituals. Each setting for the part of the Mass is drawn on a traditional Negro spiritual. The music is drawn from the depths of the African American experience in slavery and in freedom. The spirituals, however, are a gift to the wider American and world family. The spiritual's tradition was created for community singing and therefore naturally encourages congregational participation. Spirituals. Frederick Douglass talked about spirituals. Excuse me one second, please. I can just get this out of the way. Frederick Douglass said, the songs of the slave are the sorrows of their hearts and they are eased by them. Just as an aching heart is relieved by its tears. He also said, I'm inclined to think that the master suspected us when we sang because prudent as we were, when I look back, I can see that we did many silly things, very well calculated to awaken suspicion. We were at times remarkably buoyant, singing hymns and making joyous exclamations, almost as triumphant in their tone as if we had reached the land of freedom. A keen observer might have detected in our repeated singing of, Oh, Canaan, sweet Canaan, I'm bound for Canaan, something more than a hope of reaching heaven. We meant to reach the north, and the north was our king. The songs of the slave are the sorrows of their hearts, and they are eased by them. These songs have so much to do with the African American experience. Justice. Liturgical justice, what we will be talking about tonight. Justice is right relationships. As Cornel West says, never forget that justice is what love looks like in public. <laughs> and liturgy? Well, I read something very interesting just the other day by theologian and writer Maggie Dawn, and she says, Liturgy, the Greek word, liturgia, derives from two root words, laos, the people, and ergos, ergas, a work. But the popular definition that liturgy is the work of the people is highly misleading. Liturgia was never meant to actually mean the work of the people. It was rather a word that described Act of public service, usually initiated by a, a wealthy private benefactor. For example, some wealthy person might build a temple or a town hall or foot the bill for one of those two. But the work itself was for the community. Likewise, any public work done in service to the gods, but that would also benefit the community would qualify as liturgy. It's work, all right. And it's about people, but it's not the people's work. It's a work that is for the people and for the transformation of the wider world. For the people 
and for the transformation of the wider world. So liturgy might legitimately be said to be work for God that transforms our world and benefits people. And so my question is, do our liturgies look and sound and feel like that? Do our liturgies do this work for the people? Do our liturgies help to transform the world? Now we begin in thinking, as always, about the experience of the people. People who need work transformed, enslaved and free African Americans. And we begin with a lament. A lament from the book of Psalms, a lament that you can hear through many experiences of African Americans. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. used this lament in some of his speeches, but I also know that my mothers and fathers enslaved in the state of Virginia also would have used these words. <clears throat> How long, Lord, will you utterly forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I carry sorrow in my soul, grief in my heart day after day? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me, answer me, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death, lest my enemies say, I have prevailed, lest my foes rejoice at my downfall. But I trust in your mercy. Grant my heart joy in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for God has dealt with bountifully with me.
for the writer of ancient Israel and to my ancestors enslaved in pre-colonial, colonial, revolutionary, and the antebellum United States, we have been crying out to God asking, how long? Singing of our experience, expressing our faith, that is our relationship with the divine. How long? We have been speaking and singing and crying about the Odyssey, asking how long, how can a good God permit this manifestation of evil? Based on African cultural traditions and carried through the hell of the Middle Passage, African Americans have been God wrestlers in song. God wrestlers in song. It began with the field shouts and hollers. It began with drumming and ring shouts, sacred dance, like it's right on that poster that was used to advertise this lecture tonight. Interestingly enough, much like the songs of lament, Many of the spirituals, even as they did lament, would end with a steadfast faith and trust in the divine. Sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down. Oh, yes, Lord. Sometimes my soul is to the ground. Oh, yes, Lord. Kill them. And 
when someone said, well, Dr. Harris, you have to lead us in song, that was the only one I could think of. It had to be one of the sorrow songs. And yet, we had to pray for the wounded soul and the sensing soul. There is a bomb in Gilead to make Think about it. 
Let us break bread. What's the next word? Together. There's going to be a meeting. A secret meeting. Not necessarily to plan the escape, but it could be. A meeting in the hush arbor or rush arbor. Out away from where the quarters were. Now, if you're going to go to a meeting, there are two things you need to know. What are those two things? When and where. 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 When I call on my knees with my face to the rising sun. What time? <laughs> sunrise. Mm-hmm. Sunrise. Probably a little bit before sunrise for two reasons. One, they didn't have electric lights. So you had to be up and about to work during the day catching every bit of light. And the other reason why it might be an hour to an hour and a half before sunrise, I learned from someone years later who heard me singing that song. He said, I know what they're doing. On their knees, facing the rising sun, oh Lord have mercy on me. And when you put that together with the history that 12 to 15 percent of the people who were brought from Africa, stolen from their homelands, had Islam as their faith tradition. What were they doing? Right, getting up was the first prayer of the day. Fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun. Mm-hmm. The Lord have mercy on me. Y'all sound so good. Let's say another prayer. <laughs> Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rock.
in red, go ahead. Cast on the troubled the water. They must be the ones that Moses led. by their white commanding officer, black Civil War soldiers from majority Catholic St. Augustine and St. John's, Florida, filled the 33rd United States Colored Troops, or the 1st South Carolina Regiment. Now providentially, Colonel Higginson, their commander, kept a record of a favorite regimental spiritual. He actually wrote down words for lots of, of spirituals. But he kept a record of a spiritual called Hail Mary. <laughs> so naturally, when people come up to me and they say, you know, spirituals, that's Protestant music. I go, well, <laughs> Hail Mary. Hmm. 
Higginson describes the soldiers singing as they marched in time. They were enthusiastic and they were unimpaired by the feminine invocation to Mary. Hail Mary, hail Mary, full of
written and conceived out of community, music that was meant for community singing, was really very well suited for full, active, and conscious participation, as the documents of the Second Vatican Council, uh, specifically the liturgical documents, like the Second Concilium, was encouraging that kind of singing. But once again, people would say, that's Protestant music. Don't get me started. Okay. Now, these days, there are black Catholic churches, and among African American Catholics, there's about three and a half million of us in the nation. Now, that's not including the Catholics who have come from different countries, so African uh, Catholics. Many from Nigeria, from Ghana, and so there are you know, many black Catholics in the United States. But so much of the music is really coming out of gospel traditions, especially in African American communities. Now, I love piece of gospel music, let's just say that. But there are things that I ask about the music. Is there justice in the music? Does the music speak truth to power? Is it music that is meant for community singing? Now what's interesting is that in the praise and worship movement, that music does very well in community singing, but I don't hear so much justice in the music. We still need music that we can take into the street, we need music that we can use to speak truth to power. And we need music that within our liturgical context is welcoming, remembers the history. Music that is in the bones of the people, music that is well and easily sung by people of different generations, by people who are young and by people who are more seasoned. <laughs> and so I wondered what could be possible. Now, the welcome table mass of spirituals, that really came from an idea that my sister and the pastor, where she was the director of music, they had this idea together. It was a parish, most blessed sacrament parish in Philadelphia. When that parish was built, it was a huge Irish-American parish, one of the biggest in the nation, actually. And in this parish, after the Irish community moved out and the African-American community moved in, the numbers were certainly a little smaller, but every now and again, they would have a homecoming. And the place would fill up many people that had been baptized and married there, confirmed there, you know, that they would come back, the African-American community would come back. And at one point, the pastor said, well, why don't we use some melodies that people know? Let's try something out and see if it will work with the melodies of spirituals and the text from the ordinary of the mass. Now, people have been talking about this for a while. Clarence Rivers in the 1950s, and he's one of the real pioneers of modern black Catholic music. Clarence Rivers said, you can't put those things together. Those two things together is like a shotgun in the wet. <laughs> he said, we'll use... And so I would sing through a spiritual and then imagine not only if the melody fits, but if the meaning fits, does it work? When you hear the music, does it help you know what the ritual action is? Does it help you also remember those creating communities that worked so hard and lived under such oppression? And so there are just a few of these that I'd like to try together. Would you please turn to page two? And look down at the bottom where there is the glory. And I kept thinking, what spiritual 
would go well with the glory. And there's one song that came to mind again and again, and it is the spiritual ride on King Jesus. Ride on. Now, when I was growing up, we used to say, right on, King Jesus. <laughs> Okay, now, I know there's some people here that have perfect pitch. I do not, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but, so, the way the original source material. Right on, King Jesus, no man can I know me. Right on, King Jesus, right on, no man can I know me. Now, as I moved into my feminist and womanist time, that I would say, no one can I handle me. <laughs>
to the Sanctus, the Holy, Holy, down the bottom. It's a slight bit of an end joke because the Sanctus is one of the oldest of the last parts, one of the oldest parts of the liturgy. And so the spiritual had to be, give me that old time religion, give me that old time religion.
became one of the bishops in the Methodist Church in Wisconsin. They sang parts of the Mass of Spirituals. Liturgical justice. I know that other people are going to do this kind of work. I know there are wonderful musicians right here today. I invite you, do this kind of work. How can we welcome each other? How can we literally sing each other's songs? How can we live our love out loud? Can our liturgies look and sound and feel like liturgical justice? Do our liturgies do this work for the people? Do our liturgies help to transform our world? I won't say that the Welcome Table Mass of Spirituals does all of that all at the same time, but it is a beginning. And the beginning in the African American and especially the black Catholic community where our songs are at the center of our celebration, where the music we carry in our bones helps us to pray and to celebrate. And where for the amen, we use, he's got the whole world in his hand. Now y'all can sing, she's got the whole world in her hand. But I'm going to leave you with that, and there will be time for question and answers. If you want to, if you want to keep one of these, if you could just drop just literally a dollar just off of the back, that would be great. And then please feel free to keep this. Thank you so much. I look forward to your questions. I look forward to thinking with you about ways we can have liturgical justice and continue to have that because we need it in our broken and traumatized world. Our liturgies need to give us energy so that we can go out. Now, the young folks may say, we're not going to sing those spirituals. And I say, fine, y'all go ahead and sing Beyonce. But guess what? When she sings about freedom, she sings, we ain't in the water until the tide don't move. Mm -hmm. You can sing Kendra Kamar. All right. That's fine, because those are modern-day spirituals. And us more seasoned folks will come right after you, supporting you and singing. Amen, amen.
different genres. And you will hear gospelized spirituals. If you hear a spiritual that has a whole bunch of verses and a whole bunch of words, it's probably a gospelized spiritual. And that's cool. Okay, thank you. Good question. Yes, please. Thank you very much. I never thought of being in this hall and enjoy it so much. <laughs> it's a wonderful sound. Uh, lots of things here, but let's see. Um, uh, can you give a little more credit to gospel as a music that eminent? You did mention the Great Migration. Mahina Jackson said for folks in Chicago or St. Louis to hear a gospel song was like getting a letter from home. Her home was Louisiana, of course. Mm -hmm. So there's that function, I think, of gospel, that nostalgic tie to, to home. Uh, my, my bigger question, though, is your thoughts on what happens to the spiritual tradition when with all the best intentions, uh, it gets musically scored uh, for the Fisk singers and others, mm -hmm. and then can become a museum piece, a performance piece, versus something that really emanates from the marrow of the people. So I've heard of spirituals sung by the Oslo men's chorus yes, uh, in, in Church of Rome, <laughs> and somehow it just didn't have that same... Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so any thoughts on that, and also uh, the digital age that we're in, uh, what's the danger of this kind of music being untethered from uh, the physical reality and being a performance uh, being instead? So, great, great set of questions. I'll, I'll turn to the, I, I won't give you the NPR answer. I'll give you the short answer. <laughs> um, there, uh, there is the idea of the folk spiritual. And the folk spiritual is going to be usually sung a cappella, sung from the community, and really meant for community and participatory singer. Uh, being sung in that way. The concertized spiritual. In some ways, that is, I mean, it very much is an honoring of the tradition, but it is certainly not meant for, you know, community singing. I love concertized spirituals. However, I love most folk spirituals, where we sing like we sang tonight, just lift up your voice and sing. Uh, you know, when I talked about that going up and, and down piece, uh, one of the modern arrangers of spirituals who is so incredible, and unfortunately died too young, is Moses Hogan. Incredible arrangements of spirituals. And they show, they show something off, and they bring some of that tradition, and they have the liberating words. But in my gut, I know I need to be able to sing the song. So I say there's room for all of them. It's just that I hope that a director of music or a choral director or a congregational musician doesn't think that the concertized spiritual is the only kind that there is and doesn't relegate them to that anthem slot in worship, but make sure that they are, that they are wide enough. Because yes, there is that idea of can they be untethered from the experience. And if someone, you know, you wake up in the morning, you put on the radio, and someone else has been shot, you know, an African American person has been shot in their home, and you need to sing, you need to lament, 